Well, I wasn't doing anything else, so I might as well record a video. <sighs> Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode six of what is this show? Rocky Mountain High. This is the series where Josh and I are taking a couple of buggies. Well, I'm taking two. Josh is taking one. To the We RC Rock Crawling Competition being held in Denver, Colorado, this upcoming June. Of course, there's a link down below to where you can find more information about this event. If you're interested in spectating, there will be places to spectate and watch a bunch of grown men drive tiny trucks around. We are like literally one week away now from this event. And uh, I'm pleased to say there's been some progress and a few setbacks. Let's get right into it for this week. This is the 1.9 Unlimited class uh, buggy. This is the Jimmy's build. This is a build along that Josh is running over on his Discord, which I should really pay more attention to. If there's anything I learned from the live stream tonight, it's that there's a lot of really helpful information there from a lot of really helpful people. And uh, I'd skim it. <laughs> I should probably pay closer attention to it if I really want to know what's going on. Uh, but here it is. There's been a lot of progress. The last time you saw this, it was in pieces. Now it's in one piece. And it works mostly. It's uh, drivable under its own power. The spur gear still makes a lot of noise. And I don't know why. Because this, it's, it's, a loose, it's a loose mesh still makes a lot of noise. I don't know why that is. It's not rubbing against anything, so it can't be that. I think it's just a noisy transmission because I had to do the modifications. I modified the transmission, so it's probably on me. Uh, regardless though, it is nearly there. RC Fabricator Frank sent me some really great copper panels. Uh, Josh doesn't like it when I touch them because they do patina quite quickly. Uh, but I've got some polishing pads, thanks to Frank, uh, and I'll be making sure that these are nice and clean before they get acid etched. And uh, there's one done up there. Let's see if we can, there we go. That's a, there we go, that's a better way to show it off. Uh, Waffle House theme, looking really good, very pleased with that. And um, yeah, all the send, cut, send aluminum parts got installed, so everything is mounted. Um, this buggy is designed to run both dig and uh, Josh is building some crazy front dig as well. I opted to not run the front dig because I literally don't want to deal with any more complications. This is already more complicated than I would usually make a truck and uh, I just, you know, me, failure points are always an option. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it a little more simple. Um, all the respect and power to the people who are doing that. I think it's really fun and cool and awesome, uh, but uh, just not for me. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, this is really coming along nicely. I'm really pleased with the progress. And uh, there's just so many cool parts. Josh is really putting his blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. The interior looks fantastic. It hides a lot of stuff. Um, the motor looks great back there now. It's just really solid and coming together. I did upgrade the servos to 900 LP smart direct power servos. I mistakenly, when I was setting up my Radio Master MT12, which is a very complicated radio, I managed to smoke one of them. So I had to revert back to one of the brass uh, 800 LP uh, servos for the rear steer. Uh, and I plasti dipped it so you can't tell that it's brass because you cannot have a brass servo. You can have a red servo if you want, but not brass. <laughs> Regardless, that's been painted. Uh, the brass knuckles have also been painted and all of the electronics are essentially done and functioning. Although they weren't on the stream, they are now. You know what, let's power it up. Let's do that. Um, here's the Radio Master MT-12. Uh, I've got everything set up. Uh, this was a real problem getting that one programmed uh, but let's get this in here the battery goes in the front where there's tons of space uh, let's plug it in first uh, armed and active and uh, let's uh, let's prove that everything works here front steering right left right left excellent throttle Reverse. 
See, it sounds way louder than it should be. That spur gear is definitely rubbing on something, but it's not the interior. I don't get it. I don't understand that at all. Uh, okay, let's check rear steer now. Excellent. Full rear steer, love it. Uh, let's check the dig. Brakes on. That's working, brakes off. Also working, excellent. So I didn't blow it. Everything seems to be working as expected, which is really great news. Um, the RadioMaster MT-12 does take a lot of programming knowledge, um, and there's a lot of different scripts, Lua scripts, that you can install to make things a little more interesting. Uh, you can see I've got it set up with uh, Jimmy as the screen there. But if you go into telemetry, uh, there's this other screen that was built by a very smart person to show the status of the overdrive and the dig. And because I've locked my overdrive, I'm not gonna be switching that on the fly. I'm also not going to be making that a switchable front dig like Josh is doing, which is very cool, but just beyond my scope of intelligence. Um, if you swap the dig to on and off, you can see that it actually does register that it's locked. So not only do I have a audio cue, I've also got a visual cue so I know when things are locked. Brakes are off, off you go. So that's working great, um, very cool. Um, it's a complicated thing to set up and I've really got to start learning how to use four wheel steer because that's going to be key. Uh, that's on the pot here. You can see that that does that. That's how I burnt out the servo because I had this set way beyond the endpoints here. And then when I flopped it that way, it just tried to go way beyond its limits and completely burned out the servo. So that's on me. <laughs> uh, you know what I love is the pressure of trying to get this working and finished in the amount of time that I've left, which isn't much. Uh, there's still a fair number of things to do. Uh, I gotta get all these panels drilled so they'll go on because they're still clean. Um, I think I'm going to uh, just kind of make a quick template out of paper, I transfer that over to these, and then drill some holes. Um, Got to set that dig servo again, I guess. And then that's it. I think that's it. There's going to be one more update, so who knows? There may be more things. All right, on to the 1.9 Pro Mod. And in the still waiting for a very important part portion of this video, here's my F-Toy. And... Yep, still has the wrong axles underneath it. Those mounts still haven't arrived. They're supposed to have arrived Tuesday, uh, but somehow they got redirected to Alberta, which is a few provinces away from me. Um, but uh, they should be here soon, hopefully. Uh, they are on the way though. I got a tracking number, so that's something. Uh, but a lot has happened. All the rest of the panels are done on the F-Toy now, so Duffman graces every panel, including the front. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, it's, uh, I like the bulged hood. I think it actually looks pretty cool. I think it worked out pretty well. Um, all the bits and pieces are in, the interior is in, the dig is in, everything is functioning. Pretty, pretty loud noises from the, the mesh. I'm not so good at the mesh. I don't know why. It always seems to be louder once it's all together. I think that's just, you know, just my my lot in life. I seem to always struggle with that. <laughs> I don't know why. It's a pretty easy concept. And I usually do pretty well with it. Oh well. Um, still on leaf springs. Still hilarious. Uh, I am so happy with how this one's turned out. The interior was a big struggle, but uh, it's all come together quite nicely in there. I had to build this tunnel here to uh, give myself some room to route some wiring and also to uh, make sure the dig servo wasn't going to interfere with anything in there either. Uh, you can see that Stan Lee fits pretty well. He's a little up high. I wish I could get him to have some more articulation, but he doesn't. <laughs> so that's how it's going to have to be. Uh, it won't be Stan's head for long. Or um, it won't be this man's head for long either. They're both going to have a head replacement. Uh, it's going to be me, of course. Well, it's going to be me, of course. Uh, here's me wearing an old vintage style helmet. 
thanks to James Knight from Knight Customs. Uh, this will be available soon for all of your building purposes and voodoo doll needs. Uh, and uh, he's going to look really good in there once I get him scaled to the right size. I tried scaling him down, uh, but uh, my math was wrong. <laughs> Shocker. It looks a little small compared to that, but we'll get that sorted out. That's not a big deal. And then it's time to add some accessories, some scale accessories to kind of make this thing look real. Um, get the right axles underneath it. My F10Ts are built and ready to go. Just waiting for the proper leaf spring mounts for those specific axles. And then this spinny tire won't be a problem. Uh, we've got to do some wiring work. All the wires are very loose. Um, and then we'll hook all of that stuff up. The uh, battery box and receiver box is all done and it looks pretty good back there. Pretty happy with that as it turned out. And then, um, yeah, it's time to run some trucks, I think. Uh, so I guess there'll be one more episode um, before we leave, uh, which is uh, not long from now. And uh, I feel like every time I look at it, something goes awry or it doesn't work quite the way I had hoped. And then it's a whole other ball of wax to get that thing working and then something else doesn't work. But I feel like we're close and I feel like there's been a lot of progress and I'm really pleased with what I've been able to achieve in not much time, if I'm honest. Uh, everything looks great and everything's going to work or it's not going to work and it's still going to be a blast. I think that's the thing that people have to remember is that these events are supposed to be fun. And while Josh and I have put ourselves under a lot of undue stress, these trucks, whether they finish all the courses or not, we're going to be there and we're going to be having a great time with a lot of great people. And uh, that's something to always remember. It should be fun. And if it's not, you're not doing it right. That should be the intro. Uh, but yes, very pleased with how things are coming together. I'm so happy with how the etching turned out. One tip, uh, if it looks like the masks didn't hold properly, you can usually polish some of that out. And I managed to do that with a lot of these panels. And now they do look really darn good. I'm really, really pleased with how they turned out. One final thing, Josh's motor has been printed and put together. Uh, now I just have to paint and detail it. And I won't be sending it to him. Although maybe I still will have time. I could probably send this out Monday and it, it would probably get there in time. Uh, and then, um, then we're all done. We've really, really come a long way. I know I didn't really build this, I know I assembled it, but I'm really happy with what I assembled. I think it really is quite close to what I wanted out of this truck, and uh, I'm happy with the results. The other one, on the other hand, the F-Toy, I could not be more pleased with how this has turned out. This is exactly what I wanted, and for it to actually come to fruition and be the thing that I hoped it was going to be, is pretty amazing and it's a really cool feeling. Uh, highly recommend it. If you have not scratch built your own truck, whether it be a F toy or a buggy or just a straight old truck, there's nothing more gratifying than doing it yourself. So I highly recommend it. Dive in, try it. You can do it. All right, motivational message over. How many trucks have you started from the absolute bare minimum and built something creative and brilliant? And if you haven't, do you have plans to do it? Put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of those comments as I can, even now when I'm extremely stressed. Rebecca handles most of it though. Praise wheel. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week. From Colorado, in fact.